what's up guys? Today we talk about the Canon Kiss, aka the EOS 500 or the Rebel XS. Four reasons why I think the Canon Kiss is a great camera for beginners. Reason number one is very cheap. I bought this camera for $15. The seller did not check carefully whether it was fully functional. So it was an asset item, which means no return or refund if the camera is broken. Turns out that everything is working perfectly, so I was lucky. Usually you can get this camera body for $20 to $30. In addition, you need to buy a lens. I recommend buying the 50mm f1.8 which will cost you $50 to $60 second hand so in total you will pay no more than $100 for a decent film SLR kit as a lot of people know the price of film cameras is increasing dramatically especially the compact ones so buying a cheap SLR such as the Canon Keys is very reasonable because you stay away from hype speculation you don't need to pay for the sentimental value like you do to the popular film cameras. Reason number two, the Canon Kiss is using the EF mount lenses. So if you are already using the Canon DSLR, you don't need to buy lenses. You can just buy this camera body and you can use the lenses you already have, which makes the whole thing even more economical. Reason number three, compared with the 40 to 50 year old film cameras, Canon Kiss has a lot of auto features such as auto loading, auto focus and auto exposure which make it very user friendly to beginners. It's also better than point and shoot cameras because everything is more accurate and the lens quality is better. The probability for you to taking a good image is higher. You don't waste your film so in the long run you save money too. The final reason is that unlike other SLR cameras, the Canon Keys is quite small and lightweight. Probably because it's made of plastic, it's easy to carry around, especially when you are using a small lens such as the 50mm f1.8. It's basically as big as a digital mirrorless camera. Now I'm gonna demonstrate how to use this camera. This is the Canon Keys Gen 1. There are also Gen 2 and Gen 3. However, there's very little difference among the various models. First of all, we need to put battery into the camera. What you need is two pieces of CR123A batteries. And then we put a new roll of film inside the camera. Auto loading is working now. You can see the number of exposure over here. If you have used a Canon DSLR, you will be very familiar with this dial. L means lock. The camera is turned off when the dial is set to this position. You can turn the dial to operate this camera. P means program mode. TV is shutter speed priority. AV is aperture priority. M is manual mode. ADAP literally means auto depth of view. When you set the dial to this position, you will have a big depth of view which means everything will be in focus as much as possible. This is sound mode. You can turn off the focusing beeper by turning the dial to the left. ISO setting. Usually the camera will recognize the ISO from the DX code on the canister. But if you're shooting some special films, such as motion picture films, there's no DX code on the canister. You have to set your ISO manually. When you turn the dial all the way to the end, and press the self timer button, the film will be winded back to the canister. Sometimes you just have to take the film out before you finish it. 
This is fully automatic mode, basically like the program mode. This is portrait mode, landscape, close up, and spot. This is the flash button. You press it the first time, the flash will be turned on. You press it the second time, the red eye reduction is turned on. This is self timer. This is shutter button, autofocus auxiliary light. This is AE lock, exposure compensation. You can keep pressing the button and turn the dial to adjust exposure compensation. This is date mode. When this is turned on, you can display the date on the images. You can press the mode button to choose the date format. There are several options. Unfortunately, I can't change the year later than 2019. Canon certainly did not expect some people to use their cameras in 30 years. In conclusion, the Canon case is not only better but also cheaper than most other film cameras. It's a largely underpriced product, so I recommend people who want to start out on film photography to seriously consider buying this camera. That's all for today's video. Stay tuned for more interesting content.